The boy was foul, clear, straight up. How you gonna not call that? Look, if you want, I can put time back on the clock, replay it. You talking about a do-over, baby? Are you talking about a fucking do-over? That's not how the game is played! Hi there. Normally with these videos, I put an effort into, like, the lighting, the setup, the production. You don't see all these shadows. I'm set up. You know, everything's got a nice intro and all that. Today, I just got a couple of clips of Avon Barksdale because I am very annoyed. And I'm also on a clock here. It's my birthday when I'm recording this. My girlfriend's sick. I just went to bring her some groceries there. You know, she's got, you know, an illness, so I had to go look after her. When I get back, the plan is eat this takeaway, watch a movie at the same time she's watching it. You know, enjoy the moment together. Ireland's decided to have a do-over. A freaking do-over. Uh, I've had to turn off monetization of this video, I'm pretty certain, anyway, because otherwise I'll get, like, all the copyright strikes. So at least I can use that clip and I can let Avon Barksdale swear all I like without it on. So sorry for the wobbly camera and all that. I just gotta rush this the heck out. But, uh, yeah, for those of you who don't know, uh, Ireland has one of the earliest ending seasons in all of Europe at the top tier of basketball. The reasons are boring, I won't get into now, but essentially it ties into the seasons of other sports and it makes sense. In the second tier, Division 1, in the men, Portlaoise played UL in, recently in a quarterfinal playoff game. They're all single elimination. Only the champion goes up to the top flight. That's the Super League. Portlaoise had a foul. Then they fouled late in the game against UL in their quarterfinal. The clock was deemed to be at all zeros, which is just wrong, just so we're clear. Um, but um, as, a, as a rule, like it can be at point one, but we'll get to that as well. Um, you know, sorry for all the shaky cam here, but I am going handheld here. And UL scored the winning free throws, plural, they were tied going into it, to win the game. So what happened? Well, Portlaoise appealed. And this is where I start to get miffed. Not that Portlaoise were wrong, hard done by. We're going to get into the whole thing about it's okay to be hard done by in a second. But the appeal was originally, let's have a replay. No. Then there was, it looked like there was going to be no replay. The original result will still stand. Not nice to Portlaoise, but what really should happen in sport. I, you know, and we'll get to why in a second. Instead, now, at a date to be determined as of this time, the last, but there will be three tenths of a second put back on the clock with the score as it is for those three seconds, to, three tenths of a second, not three seconds, three tenths of a second to be played as a do-over. And Avon? That's not how the game is played! Thank you, Avon. And that's essentially where we're coming to with this video today and why why I'm going so lower quality than I usually do. So, because I'm miffed. I'm really miffed because, like, this is a thing we see in very few sports. Like, in Ireland, we're kind of more used to the replay over an objection because it's reasonably common, but while still despised in Gaelic games, in hurling and football. But in Ireland, in, in other sports, you don't see it. Now, teams get miffed, teams get screwed, but I hate to break it to you, that's life. We all get through, and believe me, the last 12 months of my life, I know plenty about the ball not breaking the right way, and how a do-over could have done lots for me. Did I get a do-over? No, because you don't get do-overs. That's just the way it is. Yes, Portlaoise don't miss out on their chance to, not even their chance to go up, their chance to have a shot at winning a game, to then try and win two more games to go up. But that's life. That's basketball. I know I'm going to annoy a lot of people in Portlaoise, with this view, with this statement. But, you know, that's kind of what comes with the territory. I'm a journalist. People get annoyed at me. Uh, even one as likable as me who likes to wear caps. This is a gift for my buddy Steve. But, yeah, you know, we, I'm 43. I've seen a whole lot of nonsense in my life. I've seen a whole lot of sports teams I like get absolutely screwed over. Like, you can't even begin to understand what it's like to sport UCD football, for example. Uh, my word, there is no such thing as home advantage in soccer when you're a UCD fan. It doesn't exist at all so yeah yeah teams get screwed it happens ain't go we ain't gonna do our overs like even when they do happen they kind of kind of go what does it do over like it's just not sports and it's just a terrible precedent because this is the first time it's going to happen but it, it means other teams are going to see there's an opportunity for them going forward like i hate to use a slippery slope argument but this is really is when you what you need to use the debating term a causal link this is the causal link right here teams will see that a team has succeeded in getting a do-over to happen, they'll believe that if they appeal on other grounds, they'll get a do-over. Because this doesn't happen elsewhere in basketball, by the way. Appeals happen, but what happens is, typically speaking, that, you know, they go, the team, they either 
the original thing is really upheld is it yeah or the league apologizes saying yeah we screwed that up we're sorry we'll endeavor to do better the next time but you're still out and teams go okay you're still lost you go okay like they get annoyed their fans hate it and you come back the next season and this is the thing revenge is so much better than justice why do you want justice okay i know why you want justice but think about why you want justice because the opportunity is taken from you right now no like that's the biggest chip on your shoulder to carry into next season and every season going forward you can carry that like the ultimate motivational tool come on seriously we've seen it so many times in sports before like competitors that's what they do they have to be a little bit what's the term sick uh as someone who is that way uh you know i, I can understand that you've got to be a bit of a scary person to be a competitor and yeah you know that's that's the way things go uh and you lose in sports and sometimes it's not your fault you do everything right and you still lose and poor least you're here like looking for a do-over and I'm like, I'm not trying to single out Perlisha, by the way. I'm singling out a system which is enabling a do-over. Because, you know, what we're going to do, this is going to be the turn to the sport going forward, and here's a key reason why. Why would anyone be a ref? Uh, refs get fees, sure, great, but, like, you know, and they get the opportunity to go really high up to be international refs and effectively get abused in multiple different languages as opposed as opposed to just in uh, English and Irish because I'm sure there are some Asquilga mocking coming on in the crowds. Well, I hope so. Some of you better, if you are going to be rude enough to be mean to refs, at least try and do some of it Asquilga so you're being bilingual about it while you're here, uh, you know? Uh, but uh, in all seriousness, I refed as a kid in a few different sports, soccer and uh, Gaelic games, to be precise. And I had one enormous thing going for me, that being that I am enormous. And uh, as a very young man, I had serious anger management issues. So I don't anymore if you haven't guessed, although being tested tonight. And yeah, I've, uh, you know, what can I say? I, I was able to be a bit more forthright on the field. And, you know, yeah, sure, the slings and arrows came at me. But one, I'm pretty quick wit. And two, I'm a cold hearted son of a whatever. Well, my mum's lovely, so I won't call it, say son of a whatever. But I'm pretty cold hearted when it comes to refereeing. And you need to have a very thick skin to ref. The amount, and I've, by the way, this is definitely not a single you know, Port Leash team. The amount of absolute grief I've been seeing refs in this country get the last couple of years, but particularly this season, is unreal. And, like, folks, you can have your argument with the Senate referee in, but these are people who are like, you know, without them, the game doesn't happen. And if you want the Senate referee to get better, you need to encourage more people to want to be refs. And if you're going to encourage more people to want to be refs, I hate to say it. But thinking that there's some injustice being put against you because the referee got a call wrong is not the way to do it. Um, referees get calls wrong. That's going to happen. It's like part of the humanity of the game, in fact, that there is a person who is fallible who is there to administer the game. That's kind of part of the charm of any sport. And the more we sort of rag on refs or shout at them or anything like that, the less anyone else is going to want to do it. Because again, it ain't really worth the cash. Like, you know, I stopped doing it in my early 20s when basically I was working enough that uh, refereeing wasn't really worth uh, the effort of getting up anymore. I mean, the also college was awesome. College is freaking fantastic. I recommend college for the non-learning parts so, so much. But um, yeah, you know, so there's that. But like, seriously, I'm just going to finish on this. Do-overs don't belong in this sport. Avon? That's not how the game is played!